Is your time spent in Washington today uh, meeting with lawmakers on Capitol Hill to make the case for funding in Ukraine? You know, I am here uh, showing my gratitude towards Ukrainian people because I believe they are fighting not just for Europeans but for Americans as well. So that's why I see it's important that when we look to transatlantic relations, we could see those democratic values and liberties be met. Mm. That's why for sure I hope uh, there will be this decision about help to Ukraine because it's at utmost importance to my country, to Europe, to Ukrainians that uh, those promises and those international values we all are agreed some time ago, we can still be holding very high on our priorities. Well, it still, though, remains very much a question whether or not Congress has that same view, whether or not continuing to provide aid for Ukraine is necessary. What is Latvia's concern about if the aid for Ukraine does not come through to the same extent it has over the course of the war thus far? If Ukraine does not win this, what happens to your country? What do you fear would happen? You know, our country is struggling like uh, living in a house with an alcoholic uh, neighbor. And I would say uh, Russia is this alcoholic or drug addict neighbor. You never know what he will do next. So you can do your homework, you can protect your door, as Latvia has done. We are spending almost 3% of our GDP to our military and defense. We are giving Ukraine help almost of uh, 0.25 uh, for military capabilities, but we know that without uh, our allies uh, working together, Ukraine cannot succeed uh, in a speed we all wanting. It means that NATO countries can get under the target of Russia. So why are we ready for that? I don't think so, because maybe from the perspective of Washington, it seems Ukraine and Russia is far away, but uh, if Russia wins, those consequences will affect all the world, also Washington, also United States, not just Europe will be affected by this result of the conflict. You're marking 20 years uh, as a member of NATO in Latvia, which is a remarkable uh, moment for you. And Jens Stoltenberg is asking for more. Uh, he spoke earlier to reporters, the Secretary General asking for European nations to increase their commitment, to increase aid to Ukraine. What is Latvia prepared to do? What are your neighbors prepared to do? We have helped Ukraine since the beginning of the war, even before. Uh, Latvians were the first who gave military aid to Ukraine, and that's why Kiev is free mm -hmm. uh, from Russians. And uh, we know that we will be doing more. Uh, as I mentioned before, we are already giving 0.25 percent of our GDP military aid. We are leading drone coalition together with the uh, United Kingdom, helping Ukraine uh, to fight uh, with Russia. Uh, with drones, because it can substitute artillery in some cases, and there are many other countries joining this drone coalition. We will be the ones who will be participating in the Czech platform, uh, buying artillery for Ukraine now, mm -hmm. because they really need this artillery now. We cannot let Russia win this war, because it will be not just Russia, it will be China as well. So we have to understand those links are interconnected, and then we can lose uh, the values democratic states share all around the world. We are democracies, and democracy is costly. You mentioned that you are joining uh, that Czech effort to get more artillery shells to mm -hmm. Ukraine, something we know is desperately needed. Europe's promises to deliver more shells uh, to Ukraine have not happened on the timeline at which they initially said. How else can that ammunition be sourced? What other countries might be able to provide it? How, how can you go about getting it to Ukraine in the more immediate term? That's why we are joining this Czech uh, platform. They are ready to uh, buy from third countries outside Europe, and we know that there will be many European countries joining this initiative. And uh, We are looking towards India, maybe some other countries where we can find those artillery which we are not yet able to produce ourselves in Europe. The fact is that in Europe we are not able to produce so much as it is needed for Ukraine right now. That's why help from allies such as United States is 
very important, not just because uh, we cannot do something that's technically not possible in such a speedy way, and I believe it is doable if we can act together, if we can act together on a united uh, decision. It appears likely that Vladimir Putin will win another term as president this weekend. Uh, I'm not sure how much time will be spent counting votes, Prime Minister. Uh, but do you believe that it is his goal to reconstitute the Soviet Union? You know, it's hard to, hard to analyze what Putin thinks, yeah. because, you know, uh, he's uh, been a leader of that uh, country, a neighboring country of Latvia and Baltic states, for a quite a long time. And what I have seen, this country has become more desperate, uh, less liberty, less human rights, uh, less opportunities for freedom of speech. And I believe uh, he has some crazy ideas in his mind uh, if we can see what really happened with the war in Ukraine. So I can just imagine if he will have a sense that those democratic states have some crack in the wall and they are not as strong as we can act together, I believe he can use his uh, crazy ideas and try to threaten and try to fear uh, other countries in Europe. Europe, as well as it could be unpredictable. So that's the Russian president and a Russian election. We have an election of our own here in the United States coming up in November, where also unpredictability was somewhat of a feature of the previous administration. And we have heard former President Trump, who, of course, is likely to be the Republican nominee, he has the number of delegates uh, to be the nominee come July, suggest that when it comes to NATO countries who aren't paying their fair share. I know that Latvia is above the quota, but that Putin could do whatever the hell he wants to those countries. How much does that rhetoric concern you? Do you fear the prospect of another Trump administration? You know, during election time, uh, this procedure could be very messy. And maybe it's even good that sometimes it's messy, because in Russia there is no even messy time. We just already know the results. So at least in democratic states, we have a lot of very, uh, very strong discussions. Latvia sees United States as a very strong, our transatlantic ally. We have learned from you a lot, and we would like to do it in next upcoming years as well. So for sure, we will be working with uh, any administration. But for us, it is very important that NATO alliance is strong, that those articles which are written down to NATO alliance, that they have been kept alive. Because otherwise, it is really a big, big threat for our countries, for our democracies. Mm -hmm. Well, we're talking about a potential two-tiered alliance if there is another Trump administration where those who do not pay enough will not be protected under Article 5. Would a Trump administration be the end of NATO as we know it? You know, I have uh, negotiated with some of uh, people out of White House, and I believe there is... Uh, strong belief in the values of NATO, nevertheless how maybe uh, publicly some messages have been said. I see. And I still believe in a united uh, uh, consensus of NATO. Otherwise, uh, we will weaken ourselves. And we will weaken not just uh, NATO, we will weaken our countries. That's why Latvia will work with any administration, and uh, we will have a strong uh, belief uh, that uh, your elections will be good. And I wish your people uh, good elections, a good process in that. I really understand it, but I hope that we will not let down NATO alliance. Of course, when we think about the NATO alliance, Ukraine is not a member of that alliance. Ukraine is not entitled, obviously, because they're fighting a war with Russia, to the same protections that Article 5 provides, which is that other members of the alliance will even put boots on the ground if necessary uh, in order to defend you as a country. But we've heard Europeans suggest French President Emmanuel Macron essentially said it wouldn't be off the table necessarily to see boots on the ground in Ukraine if it became necessary. Would Latvia ever be willing to do that? You've talked about all that you are providing to Ukraine in terms of drones, in terms of other uh, spending, obviously, effort to get artillery shells. But it would, would it ever be men? Could there reach a point in which that becomes necessary? 
I would love to have a NATO's opinion on this uh, particular uh, step forward, because I believe in NATO. I believe in those procedures and uh, analysis what our military personnel has done. And that's why I really see that uh, if there could be some training necessary, yes, we could move it to Ukraine as well. And there could be different, uh, how to say, diversions of what does it really mean, boots on the ground, uh, mm -hmm. because this uh, proposal was not probably very well prepared among the other countries participating in the meeting. I was as well in Paris uh, on that evening. But we reached one good outcome of that meeting, and it was this Czech platform where we all decided that we can buy uh, artillery, what Ukraine needs right now. And that was a good outcome. So sometimes maybe there are some ideas our leaders uh, want to show. And I believe Macron just wanted to show a leadership. And what we all really need we need to be strong leaders of our countries to really move fast and to make decisions which can help Ukraine. What Ukraine asks, we have to give them. If the funding does not come from the U.S., which is unknown at this point, we're talking about $60 billion, it's been made clear to us that that could not be replaced uh, by Europe. Do you worry in that hypothetical situation that Latvia's borders would be at risk? We are at hybrid attacks uh, every day. Uh, we have been experiencing uh, weaponization of uh, migration uh, to our borders from Belarus and Russia. So we are fighting already every day with uh, those threats Russia is giving to Europe. And uh, we have been... Uh, very uh, informed about uh, what's going on on our borders and how Russia want to uh, do maybe threaten our people, but we have been doing a lot. We built a fence on the border of Belarus and Russia, but we know that we as Europeans need to do more in military industry. So in any case, Europe will change uh, the perspective of how we see our military capabilities. If United States will not give this aid, it will be very worse uh, upset of circumstances for Ukraine. And I believe the outcome of this situation could be uh, as well as not good for United States, uh, United States as well, because you have been leaders of democracy, superpower, for quite a long time. Why do you think someone else would not want to step in if they see there is not this strong leadership towards aid to Ukraine.